Uh, Josh uh, posted there. Hey, hello, everybody. I think we're live. Uh, so uh, I always start these shows really weird. So anyway, uh, and we are going to do this on YouTube. It's the uh, weekend broiler chicken show. So we'll have some fun with the uh, public. Uh, I did post the uh, YouTube link in the uh, lounge. So if you want to pop on over there, you know, feel free. Of course, uh, there we are. We are active uh, on YouTube. Yeah, look, there's even some people even saying hi. Hi, David Davis and Mohammed and Crypto Trading France. Crypto Trading France. Say hello to Loic for me. Anyway, has anybody seen Loic around lately? Man, I miss him. He was a fun guy. But anyway, Loic, if you're watching this, uh, uh, I'm sure you will later on. Um, pop on by the site, man. I miss you. And I love your cool charts. I miss those charts. Anyway. Um, okay, so, uh, you know, for those people that follow us on YouTube and stuff like this, we do this Monday to Friday, about an hour a day. Pretty good value for the site. Uh, we do have, uh, you know, I posted the Hangout uh, on site. And um, so we do have uh, right now, I guess, about a dozen or so people in the lounge. And I'll be interacting with them and asking people questions and stuff. And so... You know, as well, site uh, members, uh, we have a daily brief request room. And uh, because the market's been so active and we've gotten the new school up and running lately, uh, I really have let this list slide a bit. So really, that's actually what I want to focus on today is just go through uh, the requests to uh, just uh, make comment, look at, suggest uh, levels on uh, ideas that site people uh, would like me to look at. So this is the kind of stuff that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And, um, you know, uh, that being our weekend show, people on the site will probably watch this. So a couple sort of announcements that's probably more geared towards site people. So YouTubers just hang out there. We'll get to the charts in a bit. Um, first thing that I wanted to point out, of course, we do have the new school term up and running, and we are making the transition to the new website. Um, Brian is very stressed right at the moment. Um, I don't like, you know, <laughs> all of you guys on the site know how important it is. Follow a plan, stick to the plan, know exactly what's going to happen next, know, you know, step by step. And, and, and then you juxtapose uh, computer programmers that are like, okay, well, you know, we're working away, we're working away. Uh, no, there is no ETA. There is no, you know, uh, live date. We're just going to keep working away until we get this. And it's like, oh, Jesus H. Christ. So um, Brian's head is uh, quite explosive right now, so I apologize. Um, I actually had to take yesterday off and just tune all this out and just, um, and just uh, take a day off. So I wasn't in the lounge yesterday. I hope you guys are having some fun. I didn't really notice a heck of a lot going on in price action. Did get a, a nice little double off overnight. Uh, tweeted that out, posted in the lounge this morning when I woke up. So that was a nice treat. In fact, actually, it was a sell half on a triple. We got off a sell half on a triple overnight, which was a lot of fun. Um, but so we could talk about that kind of stuff later. You know, I would, you know, Brian, I just want to just trade away and just have some fun. But uh, we have this new school term, and I can't believe, frankly, I'm shocked at how many students we have. Trying my absolute best, but at the same time, I am a little bit overwhelmed. Garrett uh, really could lean on you uh, and James if you're around. Um, my uh, handy dandy TAs. The only problem is Garrett won't take my damn money, which pisses me off. <laughs> I try to pay these guys to help me, and uh, they're like, no, nope, Sam Brian, not going to take your money. <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you would, Wade. <laughs> anyway, I love, I mean, God, I, you got to love a guy's character like that. I mean, but uh, long and short of it here, Garrett, uh, I am going to have to lean on my TAs pretty hard this term. And one gentleman in particular, uh, keep in mind, like we have a lot of students, even my level two and level three classes are huge right now uh we have one gentleman and he seems to have a cluster of friends that he referred to and i wanted to make specific reference to this gentleman the team has gotten your request uh and messages that you need help stevie b and your buddies and if stevie b's buddies are watching we are here to try and help you we don't want anybody to slip through the cracks but at the same time it's completely understandable that you know shit happens 
Um, but please, DVB, hear the message. We are all here to try and help you. So reach out to me. I know that you reached out to me yesterday, but like I said, I needed some time just to, for Brian just to sort of unwind a bit. Um, but we are at the post, and I've a lot uh, let all of the team know. Sior, Julian, Michael, Eugene, Sam, everybody is is uh, uh, aware of your situation, Steve, and we sent emails. Check your spam folders. Ask your friends to check the spam folders. Send me messages on Twitter, Facebook. I don't care, but we will get you taken care of. You are very important to us, and we don't want you to feel like you're being left behind. So I just wanted to make specific reference, Stevie B., if you're out there and you're watching this, please get a hold of me and we will get you set up. Now, the good part about this is that I kind of anticipated that because of the transition in sight and the uh, great and the huge class size, um, there was going to be some hiccups. So we actually started the whole school program a week ago just to give everybody two weeks at the introduction module. So there's no hurry right now. Don't get stressed out. We haven't even actually gotten into the quote unquote learning material yet. But at the same time, Stevie B, I need you to uh, hear me that we uh, we appreciate your business. We appreciate uh, you know your referrals. We would like to stay in good standing with you and we're here to try and help. So please uh, hear me now. And it, if anybody you know watching this video is a friend of Stevie B or the group that he uh, has referred to us, please you know, let him know that we're here to try and help. We're not assholes. Okay, so I needed to make comment about that. Stevie B, get a hold of me. A good note. So uh, you know that was a bit of a problem, but let's flip over and talk about something that's just fucking incredible. Um, I never, I haven't made reference specifically to the person, but he actually asked me to go ahead and actually make reference to him. Uh, Sen is uh, one of our alumni, uh, been working with me a very long time. Very, very smart guy. He did, he's done all the university educations in crypto and stuff. And we kind of joke back and forth about well, listening to these university professors talk about fundamental value in crypto when they really don't know what the hell they're talking about. It's almost comical. Um, but Sen, I mean, and, and understandably, you know, a lot of our alumni have done very, very well in this space. So, you know, uh, what I'm so pleased about, and I want to specifically make reference to him, and he's asked me to basically give him a shout out, is Sen has basically said that for the top two marks for this term in the level one, he is going to pay for your level one program. What a fucking guy, eh? Jesus. Uh, Sen, do you not know Sen? Um, he's on the site quite a bit. Um, and this is purely coming from Sen's own heart. I mean, he's a beautiful man. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I don't happen to be homosexual. But if I was, I'd go for a guy like Sen. He's a dude, man. <laughs> but the point here is that uh, beautiful heart, just absolutely beautiful heart. And he wanted me to openly acknowledge and let all you level oneers know. Um, well, it's going to be some money out of his pocket, no doubt about it. All the level oneers know uh, what's on the table here. And what Sen would like you to do is really kick ass at this. Are you over there on YouTube, Sen? Where are you? Anyway, uh, Sen, if you are around, you're watching this later, you know, of course, you you asked me to, uh, to uh, give you a shout out. So I just wanted you to, everybody, a uh, quick acknowledgement. Um, we've talked a little bit about this before. I didn't make specific reference to who it was, but, you know, let's call a fucking hero a hero, man. This guy is, this guy is awesome. So, uh, anyway, uh, just a big shout out. And if Sam wants to come on one of the daily briefs and talk a little bit about what his plan is, the general idea here is he's incentivizing all you level oneers to go and really kick ass at this program. Show me a perfect exam. I haven't got that one back yet. Who's going to be the person who gives me a 100% exam? Somebody will. And if you do, well, you know, even if you uh, get the top two marks in this student body, San has uh, graciously offered to reimburse you uh, the cost of the program. So talk about a carrot on a stick, eh? What do you think? Do we have any level oneers here in that? Axel, you're in the level one program, aren't you? Is that a bit of a uh, carrot on a stick for you? I hope so. Should be. 
Um, okay, so, uh, you know, uh, number one, just wanted to mention to anybody who's floundering right now, keep in mind we're doing this like transition and it's the new school term and it's pretty stressful and all that, right? We might have one or two people slip through the cracks. Please don't feel as though we're giving you poo-poos or whatever. We'll bust our ass to try and make you feel like you're welcome and get you set up. Then number two, Stevie B, you want to go and give me 100% mark, and we'll actually pay for your course. Ha! <laughs> There you go. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Um, all right, so I just a couple site things that I wanted to mention um, right off the top of the bat. More sort of TRI site stuff. I'm sorry, YouTubers, you're sitting there going, who the hell is he going to talk about something that I can actually use? All right, anyway, uh, a couple of things I wanted to mention. You know, I really like uh, Tange's um, uh, maturation as a, a trader here. Uh, just uh, actually, uh, we have a, two, a couple of... Tang, Tange and Tenje, but anyway, uh, Tenge, uh, really interesting. He was watching the um, economic uh, models uh, in the library, how markets work, um, understanding uh, how economies uh, work with the credit cycles. And he made a really good observation. If you think about things like Germany in the 1920s, we do have to understand that, you know, not one country in particular is uh, dominating the credit cycle, but given the fact that the world, you know, going through the Euro re sort of construction period now, uh, Asia, China emerging uh, as a superpower, um, sin, you know, in the post Cold War world, I would argue that the credit cycle, the fiat currency system, has been dominated by the United States of America. And we may, you know, we do make the argument that maybe that's got to come to an end. At some point, it will. And I would argue that it will come to an end when there is a viable alternative. I don't know what that's going to look like. You know, for Germany, uh, the United States of America was the viable alternative to get your money out of Europe, and basically Germany collapsed. Um, so the long and short of it here is until there is a viable alternative, I think we have to continue in this crazy fiat world that we live in. Um, and the dilution of the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar, basically the destruction of our collective standardized uh, standard of living uh, by the powers that be, the 1%, to make sure that they continue to control the system. Um, I think that's our reality. We don't really have a choice. You know, one. I mean, the 1% is called the 1% because they could, could keep control. And if we don't like it, we're going to get a fucking rifle shoved down our throat, right? I mean, that's the way the world works. So, as I said, uh, until there is an actual viable alternative to this fiat, U.S. dollar hegemony kind of thing, it's going to just continue. Now, the irony of it all is, if that's the case, then technically us crypto people should just become stinking rich. <laughs> So I don't know how you're going to value your, your net worth, but the way I kind of look at the world right now is basically these cryptocurrencies, especially concepts like proof of work, that uh, can technically be deemed a store of value. They are repricing themselves to just sort of maintain their value in a fiat currency world where the value of the currency is literally collapsing in our faces. And it's exactly what the 1% wants, just maintain control. So, you know, put it all together. Ironically enough, I joke with guys like, uh, there's one guy on Twitter that I like to joke with. I um, <clears throat> um, can't remember his, uh, his Twitter handle. I like to call him Zwinky. Um, and to me, what I see is actually just very business as usual. I do find it interesting that a lot of market participants are like, wow, I've never seen markets like this before. Really, I have. I've seen lots of markets like this before. Um, it's just the market just doing its thing. And we happen to be extremely focused on crypto. Uh, and when you go through one of these insane bull markets, it can be astounding and it just can knock you over price action. But... I don't really see anything here that should make you go, oh my God, it's, you know, it's some, this time it's different. Well, actually, I don't think so. Okay, so with that said, I uh, won't comment too much on the broader market, but we can always take a quick boo at good old buddy crypto. Uh, and B. So somebody uh, try and refrain from putting uh, good old Brian on mute. 
Uh, it doesn't work too well. Um, yeah, you know, pa Paolo, I see your comment there, to be perfectly frank with you. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't stretch myself that thin. I would love to give one-on-one -on -one sessions. And, you know, the irony of it all is, is that I suppose we could leave it open to the market and let it become a bidding war. And I don't know what the hell the price of my time would actually get bid up to. Uh, but you're not alone. And, you know, that's the whole reason why we built the school program and the way it is to try and spread Brian as much as possible so everybody can get a little piece of him. Uh, and as you move further and further along in the education programs, you get a, you're incentivized to get a little bit bigger chunk of him. So level two, level three programs, we still do have those tutorial sessions. But I'm even curtailing that back a bit. So interesting point, Paolo uh, Diaz on YouTube says, I guess these days Brian is too busy to give individual coaching sessions anymore. I uh, would like to talk to him for an hour. You're absolutely right, dude. Um, and, you know, I guess the weird part about all this is that uh, the people that actually were able to take the course offering when I first offered it and were able to uh, work with me uh, initially, I hope they're looking back on it going, damn, I was, I was damn lucky. Because the irony of it all is, is I can only see the prices of TRI services going up. Even the silver membership right now on the site is it's ridiculous in comparison to what like industry standard newsletter subscriptions are. I mean, it's almost comical, the difference. So just take advantage of this while it's here, pa Paolo DS. Um, and as I said, the people that were able to get a chunk of me when I first got this program up and going, those people are darn lucky, but that's another conversation for another day. Okay, uh, let's go back to our Bitcoin chart. Um, you know, we, you know, in our public presentations, we've been talking about this kind of stuff for an awfully long time. Um, big repricing, face rip, move up, and you know, I might argue to a certain degree, and you've heard me on YouTube and stuff talk about this before: buy the rumor, sell the news. Uh, direct quotes from uh, industry standard people. Uh, well, industry standard, that's not what I'm trying to say. Direct quotes from people that theoretically are at the helm to try and make sure bad things don't happen in this world. <laughs> Is that a better way to say it? SEC, CFTC, blah, 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 blah. Direct quotes from them saying, quote, unquote, our hands are tied. What the fuck? So, you know, that's the worst part about all this, guys, is this is an unregulated space. Could this asset be slightly manipulated by that 1% to uh, meet their me ends, means, whatever? Absolutely. It's capitalism. Mm -hmm. Capitalism can be damn ugly, guys. Um, we don't necessarily have to get sucked into that game. And the great part about the tools that I try to teach you guys is they are time tested. They work. You know, the irony of it all is we could be sitting here three years ago and just simply saying, all right, Bitcoin's come up to a thousand dollars. Do you all, does anybody, Wayne, eh, were you in this space? Do you remember when Goldman Sachs came out at one thousand dollars of Bitcoin and said, we recommend you buy Bitcoins? Anybody on YouTube remember that? I remember it like it was yesterday, but I've, I have a weird memory for these crazy things. And we would sit there at that point and say, well, we're not allowed to chase. If we wanted to buy, we were going to draw our reload zone, 61.8 to 78.6. And then as we come into reload zones, let's start hunting for signs of divergence. And then let's start hunting W's market structure which would have got you long at about three, $400 a Bitcoin. And I remember we had lots of students, one gentleman in particular, he, he actually came to Canada as in this work program to try and, you know, get his freedom. And he ended up got euchred into a really shitty job where he's just working his ass off in a factory, came to me to learn to trade crypto to try and escape. The son of a bitch, you know, he went, excuse me, son of a bitch, great guy, I love him. He was like, 20x margin long off the lows here and ran the whole fucking thing right up. <laughs> Jonathan, no, oh, actually, I shouldn't say his name. Sorry. This gentleman's no longer living in Canada. He's had enough of this nutso place and slave labor. He's actually gone back to his native country 
And he's basically living like a little king now. <laughs> so the bottom line here is that, you know, it was pretty obvious when you were supposed to. Uh, I'm not going to say, <laughs> are you going to hunt him down? <laughs> I'll, let, I'll just I'll say this. He actually uh, retweeted or favorited one of my tweets this morning. So he is still listening. So I'm sure he's he's listening to this show. And hats off to you, sir. You know who I'm talking about. And uh, Damn fine. Uh, damn proud of you, sir. Anyway, the point of the matter here is I think it's it's abundantly obvious where the trade on Bitcoin came in. And the worst part about it is all the people coming now to the Bitcoin story. This is probably not very many of them even remember these uh, this time. Uh, and all the funny nuances and fundamental events and stuff we used to chirp about all through these levels. It was It's kind of amusing, really, if you think about it. You know, anybody on YouTube, you want a fun little sort of adventure... We uh, just recently did one of those um, uh, bat shows, Bitcoin and altcoin trading talk. And um, um, I, we've had a number of people actually say that uh, they, the, a fun sort of assignment they give themselves is to go back and watch those. Basically, we started them like through here. And just to watch the evolution of the bull as we sort of march our way along uh, through the bat shows. And we just did another one. Um, and so, you know, uh, a lot of the comments that I made about trading ranges up here and reload zones, if we're thinking about actually investing in Bitcoins, where should we be concentrating our efforts? I don't think any of that has actually changed. It's all actually pretty straightforward. Um, I think for the time being, what I saw was, uh, you know, very uh, a lot of very harmonic-y type behavior. It was interesting, though. We didn't actually hit this harmonic objective and of course, we talk lots about Mountain Man. Bitcoin absolutely loves Mountain Man. Um, I think you know, on on the short term, if we just draw a trend line off of this pivot reversal low, and this was the pivot low from uh, back in the spring off of Goldman Sachs's big uh, two three thousand uh, dollar bottom call. Ironically enough, I actually think that this is sort of the bottom, if you will, on price. Uh, and all we're doing right now, I encourage a lot of sort of new students to trading, people on YouTube, if they're interested in this. Um, if we start breaking down and you actually look at the chart, what you really should do, let's see if anybody in the lounge uh, can remember this. And if we go to the daily chart, it's a lot more obvious. If uh, we're starting to break down and, and, and you're wondering where price goes, what should we do? Two words, both start with L. Very good, Casey. Casey, excellent, um, excellent um, application of material. I notice Casey's always bang, 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 bang. So, you know, if you use the sort of look left kind of thinking, it actually makes sense why the market pivoted off of here. Because you can see that's sort of on the daily charts, the last point at which there was a battle here, right? Somebody was trying to drive this thing down. And somebody actually came in here and said, no more down, you go up, right? So as we're sort of losing these lows in here, where's the market ultimately going to probably try and find some support? Uh, gee whiz, against that low. Look left. Um, at the same time, too, you know, off of this daily chart, if we just draw a nice simple trend line, just play and connect the dots. I do like these nice, solid, firm candle body lows. Then that paints a trend line somewhere along these. And considering this AB equals CD, yeah, I think, you know, really, and this is sort of the argument that I made recently, I think the mar market's just basically parked right in that range for now. Um, if, we, uh, if we drill in on a little bit lower time frame, um, Especially, uh, we got uh, our our resident bear. Hey, Thomas, you, you with us? Uh, do you feel like you want to do a two or three minute presentation for the YouTube people, or to hell with them? Uh, I mean, I'd like to do a presentation, but I'm waiting for a phone call that could come in at any second. So I don't want to, you know, get everyone hopes everyone's hopes up and have this call come in. Okay, well, maybe we'll just save you for site people, YouTubers. You want to listen to Thomas's two cents? Get on the site. <laughs> um. Short term, I think, uh, and by all means, if you get that call and you're like, hey, I'm free now, Brian, you know, let me know. Uh, we'll open the floor to you. 
Um, I, you know, on the site, uh, you know, I guess first and foremost, actually right out of that, uh, that uh, show that we did the other day, we talked a little bit about how there were potentially long setups for the day traders, swing traders in the community following this big dump down into that sort of nine, ten thousand dollar low. I think you could also make the argument too, ten thousand dollars is an incredibly big, fat, round number. B F R N. Probably heard me made reference to that once or two before. B F R F N. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether I want to ask what the extra F is for. <laughs> so I don't think anybody should have been shocked that price game had to come back down to this $10,000 mark. Now, the key that I see here is that we always say wicks and tails like to be eaten. And you remember I made reference that I really liked the price action here. Nice solid body low, open body right at the low, reverse head up, right? And that same action off of here. I'm liking that. We didn't get that, did we? We actually left one hell of a big tail. Yuck. Just like when we left this big tail, at some point the market's going to need to go back into that tail and just simply ask, do I really think that this is a bottom? In this particular case, you see the body came down, boom, nice close, solid low there, up, okay, we now have a range, let's rally. Um, so the fact that we've left this tail like this, ugh, that does not fill me with a lot of confidence. And somebody even in the lounge about an hour ago said, hey, Brian, that looks like a pretty nasty railroad tracks trying to form there. I gotta say, I'm I'm not filled with a lot of encouragement here. You know, we now we're instead of getting these firm body lows to establish floors, now we got a firm body close and open high to establish a pretty damn stiff resistance level there. Uh, over the short term, and let's see how bad this candle gets. Keep in mind, it's only 10:30 Pacific time. This day still technically has another six hours or so. So let's see what, how this develops. It was kind of interesting in our uh, community. We were kind of conjecturing what would happen if they actually printed a green candle here for the weekly charts. <laughs> That's going to throw everybody a curveball. I'm kind of thinking for whatever it's worth, uh, wicks and tails like to be eaten. You can see this trend line coming up here. This is probably pretty good support in here. I'm thinking maybe we still have some more business that needs to be done around this BFRN. And like we said, if we drill down to lower time frame charts, you can see reload zones are starting to develop here. The dead cat bounce off of OKCoin I thought was interesting for a couple reasons. Number one, um, and I absolutely love how uh, I can take concepts that I was taught in like the classic futures markets and stuff, and then we bring them to TRI and we put our own special spin on it. So uh, I worked with a gentleman by the name of Ray Burchett. He runs a program called Intuitive Development for Traders out of New York, you know, very straight laced, you know, just, uh, you know white collar, uh, you know, very uh, serious gentleman. If you ever listened to Ray. And, uh, you know, he basically taught me the significance of respecting 38.2 fibs. So, you know, when we see this level here, I, I think everybody should uh, acknowledge what just happened here. This is a very normal test of a very normal fib level. And literally, Mr. Burchett would simply say, you can't decide whether this is a bull or whether it's a continued bear until this 38.2 has been resolved. And that's basically what the market's trying to figure out right now is am I uh, uh, still a bear? And keep in mind, we have bearish market structure working. Um, or am I going to bottom here, take out 38.2, and I, I'm going to turn into a bull? And we should probably expect you know rallies up into reload zones and even higher time frame reload zone uh, potential. Um, I thought it was really interesting, too, when we started this weekend, and it was kind of cool. I'm just going to do a side shout-out. Um, I watched a instructional video this morning, and I got to tell you guys, I mean, the, the irony of it all is you, you come to me, and you pro uh, maybe some of you think, wow, this guy, he's like invented concepts, and oh, man, these are... Please understand, a lot of what I do, I have not 
I'm not going to take credit for it. It is like the universe's information. These are these are universal concepts that are taught in trading communities and trading desks, you know, trying to look at the market the way institutions. Um, it's not, I mean, there are some tools like Willie that are sort of my own tools. Um, but uh, on balance, a lot of the concepts that I teach, they're just universal concepts. So uh, where am I going with all this? This morning, um, actually, I uh, had the privilege, I was really lucky, and I even tweeted out this morning that uh, all you uh, level one people, people, this is this is definitely required watching. Um, and I'll even uh, repost it uh, in the lounge uh, just so everybody understands. In fact, you know what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go over to the Rocket Chat and I'm going to post it in there too. Um, so all students, uh, no excuses. Uh, you must uh, you must watch this video. Um, this is the old uh, prop firm that I uh, worked for back a few years ago before we started this uh, crazy adventure in crypto. Um, and um, I think they're, you know, as as uh, prop firms go and as people that are going to try and help you learn and really want to grow with you, I think these guys are awesome. Uh, and this is like a sales pitch for them. And frankly speaking, I don't care if they even acknowledge my, you know, I think uh, Nebraska still kind of hates me a little bit, but that's another conversation for another day. Uh, there's good old Hogue. You know, everybody at this school and everybody on the site should know Hogue. But uh, they did an interview with this gentleman, Ira. I think his name is Ira. Uh, I think they might have uh, 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 misspelled his name in their tweet. But anyway, um, and he just kept banging out all of the damn stuff <laughs> that are basically trading truths that, uh, you know, we try to teach in the education program. Some of the stuff we don't even really get to until further level on, but he just like nailed it in like a 24 minute video. I mean, literally guys, all of you should go and grab this video and save it to your files. Now, um, it's just, it's just poetry listening to this guy talk. And of course, uh, Hogue, if you do watch this, try and smile a little more, man. <laughs> Maybe Nebraska's working you too hard. I don't know, <laughs> but that's another thing. So I would highly, highly recommend anybody who wants to actually learn. This guy's like a 40, 50 year old veteran in the market. You want to learn what the nuts and bolts of actually winning at this game are? Just sit and listen to this gentleman. And of course, like I said, all of one is absolutely required. I will be asking you about this tomorrow and on Wednesday. Um, all right. Uh, I think that's what I wanted to get to. Anyway, the point of the matter here, you know, like uh, Ray Burchette, right? I learned uh, that I learned from Ray while working with the top step people. Um, I think on balance, that's what the market's doing right now. Now, I did find it interesting this morning. There's a couple things that jumped out at me on this uh, chart on the Friday daily brief video. We, I, you know, and we started to reverse back up. I noticed that this this uh, profile just looks stunningly empty. And I had asked uh, somebody, Kevin, I think, uh, to grab a screenshot of that in a Monday's Daily Brief. We were going to compare and just see how they went about the process of filling this notch in. I still think that they are in the process of filling this muak, right? We always like to put the heart there. And of course, you can use your imagination why we, uh, why we uh, call that a muak. Uh, Google the word if you, if you need to. Um, uh, you know, uh, when I was uh, prop trading, we used to call this, or I used to call it, you know, some other uh, traders too, the claw. So this kind of looks like a lobster claw. And once price is sort of accepted back into the claw, usually it can't leave the claw until the claw is completely filled in. And honestly, I think that's what's happening here is they're just going through the process of filling the profile in here. So it's a couple of interesting observations. If I was watching for levels right now, I think a couple of things that are jumping out. And it's interesting as price is working its way down in this little A, B equals C, D pattern. We noticed that, you know, uh, we were the middle of yesterday. We were actually technically overbought. So they've actually relieved that condition. We're now actually, you could argue on the shorter time frame, uh, we're oversold. Uh, and it's interesting, too, how you can see how we're actually building a potentially bullish divergence here in price momentum itself. Interesting. Um, I actually made the comment on Friday, and I think this is relevant. Um, I think, you know, when we head into the weekend, 
the market sort of says, okay, uh, the big boys, the adults, have uh, gone on break, and now we're going to have some fun with the kids. Um, and I don't know whether you were watching OKCoin OK on Friday afternoon, but something really weird happened here. Thomas, maybe you, I don't know, are you on that call? Are you here? Thomas uh, watches OKCoin OK like a hawk. And uh, we were commenting and stuff as price was breaking out here. OKCoin OK like froze. Um, and you couldn't get on the trading platform. And then uh, on sites like TradingView, if I'm not mistaken, the data feed got screwed up. Oh, it looks like they've gone and fixed it now. But there was like a big hole on the charts here. And there's an old adage, you know, especially with gaps, that uh, gaps like to be filled in. And there was, there was some shenanigans around uh, this level. Maybe, you know, in hindsight, of course, wicks and tails like to be eaten. We can tell there's some sort of unfinished business around this tail. That's the original market structure bottom. And notice what they've done here. Um, remember, you know, uh, the adults, and, you know, I think we all collectively agreed that the adults uh, on the CME contracts uh, were short. And then on that futures expiry, the market sort of jackknifed higher, right? If we go and look at those uh, futures contracts, I think we see that pretty well. Uh, do, do, do. One of these charts. One of these charts is not like the other. Here we are. So uh, on the futures contract expiry, woohoo! And of course, there's good old Ray's barbecue, uh, Ray Burchette. Um, it is interesting because we have not rallied back to 66, and I did see some people in the lounge posting this this morning. I can I can completely understand and empathize if there are people that are hunting this bearish bot setup. If this M fires, I wouldn't have a problem if you wanted to take that and risk against these highs. And if that does happen, which sucks, and everybody's boo, hiss, hiss, boo, it's telling us that the forwards want to crank down into here. So, you know, this is a pretty important level here. Um, I, you know, if anything, it's almost uh, more important here to uh, remove your emotions. Oh, I don't want to be a guy to go to 7,000, man. Yeah. You know, and just trade the levels. Try and be emotionless about this. In a weird sort of way, like I said, uh, you know, there is a potential short setup. It hasn't fired. Um, I still think that this long setup is still working. I would, you know, maybe it's sentimental. I don't want me going to go down. But I still think that this 50% level and this trend line still need to be traded to. I don't really like this as a short trade location. It just doesn't feel right. I'd much rather be hunting shorts up in here. But, you know, that's just Brian's opinion. Market will do any old damn thing it wants. That's sort of the conversation. I, if I was going to short and hunt for shorts, I'd prefer to be hunting up here. But this might turn into a bearish bot. There's good old Ray stopping the fucking party on the tracks. And if this thing continuations down, well, you know, um, we had shown you earlier where the higher time frame investors could be interested in investing in Bitcoin. I, You know, the sad part about it is ultimately at some point we're going to trade back down here. It's not really a question of if, it's just a question of when. Um, so that's sort of my two thoughts, uh, two cents on Bitcoin right now. Fun, fun. Um, you know, hunt your setups. Are you a bull? Are you a bear? The setups are abound. You know, if you're a bull, we had an interesting setup that's still sort of technically working here. Nothing's actually changed on this. Um, if you're a bear, like I said, um, I'm thinking you know, kind of this kind of action. We've come into a bunch of support lines here. You can see potentially we've got bullish divergences building here over on Stamp and RSI studies. Remember we said a moment ago, some of these uh, uh, futures markets, uh, well, actually not here, that's not a good one. Uh, where is, uh, I guess it was over here. Uh, OK coin, where's our OK coin? Uh, I guess that was this here. Too many charts, my head's gonna explode. Right, uh, we can see uh, Willie is technically stupid. We've got a potential bullish divergence, not confirmed yet. Wait for it, wait for it. We still have this notch that needs to be uh, filled in. 
I don't know. I'm not ready to put a fork in her yet, but you know, the market will do any old damn thing it wants. If she wants to break, be prepared. Um, I also don't like these kind of trend line setups because really what this is is actually it looks like that. So, yeah, I, I still think we're kind of just coming into support here, but that's just Brian's opinion. Um, all right, uh, so that's a bit of blab on uh, Bitcoin. Um, got off one double this morning. It's kind of cute. And, you know, for the YouTube audience, maybe just get an idea of what it is that I do here on a regular basis. Uh, I think I tweeted that out. Oh, yeah, I wanted to talk about that too. All right, so uh, let's actually talk about this first, and then uh, and then we'll uh, and then we'll get on to altcoins. This is uh, you know one of the big reasons why I wanted to um, uh, get these uh, futures forwards markets listed. Uh, you know, and and it's interesting we're not technically allowed to call OKCoin or MEX uh, futures markets, even though OKCoin themselves calls them futures markets. They don't understand the definition of a futures market. And so it's a little bit of a trap industry wise. Um, but try not to call OKCoin OK futures. They're not technically futures, they're forwards. Um, this is the kind of information that I'm always really, really hoping for, looking for, praying for. Um, in that a futures market by definition means that there's a clearing corporation, a third party. Uh, they have no vested interest in the trade. They are there to simply clear the trades and guarantee the transactions. And that, that's a huge, huge step forward for uh, financial markets. Because prior to that, it was always just a question of, you know, if you did a futures contract trade, or excuse me, a forwards contract trade, off market OTC, it was just always a question of would one of the parties balk? And how do you actually get them to honor the transaction? And then, you know, on a side, is is the actual person on the other side of the trade, the actual institution themselves, um, or is it just another industry uh, participant, you know, which is ideally what we like. You don't really want the exchange themselves uh, betting against you. That's why we like to call OKCoin the casino, because technically, again, it's not a regulated futures market. It is a forwards market. So uh, once upon a time, and this happens to be the Bitcoin CBOE futures contract, one Bitcoin. Still didn't. I still haven't seen the uh, CME data yet, uh, but uh, I basically just keep this uh, CFTC commitments to traders report, and I just simply update it. I just refresh the page, um, and there is the uh, CBOE futures, but. I don't see, uh, you know, I see swaps, I see US dollar index, I don't see the actual Bitcoin big boy. So uh, I'll be waiting and hopefully uh, hunting for that data. But just off of this data, I thought this is actually really telling. And this is how the small guy is helped by something like the evolution of the futures industry. If we actually look at the breakdown of the people that are participating in the market, there's basically three categories. There is, um, and you know, we have to be careful with the actual uh, use of wording here. It always changes from uh, from you know report to report, exchange to exchange. I may have my uh, n uh, my names wrong here, but. On balance, these guys should be the people who are actually in the industry of hedging. Right, what they call them the commercials, the hedgers. Um, here they call them the dealer intermediary. I'm not quite sure if I understand exactly the definition of that. Quickly, um, somebody uh, likes to put me on mute. Uh, can you hear me? Am I talking? Yeah. Oh, it's weird how that mute button jumped on there. All right. Um, the second category I think that's relevant here is um, I'm thinking that these other reportables are the institutions that typically will facilitate uh, the uh, the dealer intermediaries' needs. Um, I'm still thinking that this report is 
building out. But the way I'm interpreting this is this feels like this is the institutional players. Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, JP Morgan, blah, 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 blah. Um, and we need to understand that the in, uh, industry participants – what they would prefer to do is just simply get rid of price risk. They're not in the market to make money on Bitcoin going up or down in price. They don't care. What they really want to do is they want to use the futures market to offset risk so that they know exactly what their business models, what kind of profit margins they're going to generate. So ironically enough, usually what ends up happening with the commercials is they take the opposite side of whatever the trend is. And of course, the institutions are the ones who facilitate that need. So they are usually properly positioned to capture the benefits of the trend. So in a weird sort of way, this is like a self-fulfilling prophecy of these two. The hedgers get what they want. Um, they remove price risk. And in exchange for that desire, Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, JP Morgan all get stinking rich. Wow, that's convenient. Because of this simple fact, and of course I have to, you know, we're going to see how the names of these different reporters uh, develop. You know, in our education program, our level two program, we spend two full weeks on the futures industry and exploring the commitments to traders reports. And if you go in and pull up the charts of these, it's beautiful to watch how this, this dance plays itself out. The irony of it all is that these guys over here, they're us. <laughs> and the worst part about it is these guys usually you can almost bet on it it's awful they usually take the wrong side of the trade <laughs> they are the public they lose money 90 95 percent of the time and so if we just understand that generally speaking they're going to be on the wrong side of the trend then if we actually start looking at these numbers we're like oh wow so industry wants to have the exact opposite position of whatever the trend is. Industry right now is heavily long. What does that mean the trend is? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> All right. And the people that are going to be facilitating this need by industry to hedge, they just so happen to be short. What a coincidence. What does that suggest the trend is? Down. <laughs> and then lastly, to add insult to injury, we go and look at the public, and we see that the public is basically net long or short. You tell me. <laughs> Anyone? Should be pretty obvious. <laughs> net wrong. <laughs> I like that. Kevin, I love your sense of humor, Kevin. You are so fast with those lines. That's perfect. So whether you use this information in your trading or not, especially you on YouTube, this might be like a little overwhelming. Holy Jesus, what the hell is he showing us here? The point here is that this is what I've been waiting for forever. And it's in essence now we don't have to go to OKCoin or Max and guess what industry people are doing, we can see it in glorious Technicolor. And it's great. I mean, this, this, is, this is what this sort of difference between um, the amateur and the professional trader. Professionals understand and use this information. Well, Keith, uh, Keith asks, uh, how do we get this data? The great part about Keith is you are on the inside, so I will spoon feed you this data on a silver platter. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Okay, so I tweeted that out this morning for all the people on YouTube are like, what the hell is he talking about here? There you go. Um, the other thing that, you know, I, the good part about what we do is it's just business as usual at TRI. You got to understand all I'm doing here is I'm just running a small business of trading. I try to remove as much of the emotion out of this business as possible. That's why I created this very simple plan, just going in and buying off of tests of low ends of ranges. Um, and simply just working orders to sell halves on doubles. In this particular one, I got a bit lucky 
we actually sold half on a triple. Well, that's okay. I suppose I can live with that. Um, but it's just business as usual. And what I found actually really cool about TRI is that what ends up happening is, um, is uh, even in shitty markets, Bitcoin sort of just floundering for a month or two, and most of the altcoins are just drifting and maybe working their way lower. We're trying to remove, you know, um, hotel executive daughters from the promotion space. We're trying to remove uh, professional football players uh, from the space. And so the public is dying a thousand deaths. The great part about running a nice diverse uh, portfolio is that usually something is always, you know, sort of popping. Um, and so here, you know, we were uh, fortunate in what I would consider a pretty sanguine market right now, still in the process of cleaning itself up. As long as you have your order book working and you're rocking and rolling and you're reviewing and you're making sure you're on the up and up with all your Trek scripts. <clears throat> Whew, what a headache. <sighs> That's another conversation. Um, you should, there should always be something in the pot cooking, right? There's always a bull market somewhere. You've heard me say that repeatedly. So eh, we were in there making some money through the weekend. Not a bad day. Um, all right. What else should we talk about here today? I said that I actually want to spend most of my time just looking at your guys' stuff. So why don't we get on to that? Talked about site people, talked about old students. Hang in there, Matthew. I know you, I was a little turt with you this morning, but uh, I am a bit overwhelmed. So, you know, just keep on working through your issues and uh, send me the links that you need specific help with and I'll uh, get working on that. Uh, we, a uh, big shout out to uh, Stevie B. Please, Stevie B, give us a chance to help you. Uh, I don't want to have anybody slip through the cracks. All right, so we talked about that. We talked about Sam the superhero. What a fucking great guy. Um, so, um, you know, uh, Sam, if you want to come on, you're welcome. Any of the daily briefs, if you want to come on and talk to the audience about your plan, uh, the ball's in your court. All right, let's uh, get on with the list. Let's see what we got here. Ooh. Uh, Shane, did you want to say something? We got uh, Thomas in the house. He's free. Ah, uh, did you get off the phone there, Thomas? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, he's a busy guy, right? He's probably out chasing some salmon right now. Yep. So, uh, you know, maybe you uh, keep an eye out, uh, bark at me or something if he decides to pop back in. Uh, until we hear Thomas, I'm just going to start at the top of the list. And we'll work our way down. Um, and um, if uh, if we um, if we are blessed with uh, a Thomas offering today, awesome. If not, then uh, that's why it's got to go. Uh, okay, so first off, bad. Here we go. I'm digging the gap theory stuff. Yeah, gaps are pretty powerful, Stephen. Given that a lot of profiles are like Swiss cheese over at Cryptopia, I'm assuming that's what he's talking about. And there's a lot of upside. Wanted to ask how much more risk there is there on those coins versus the ones listed on Trex. Well, actually, I I would recommend that you actually uh, pull up your chart on Trex, then go over and pull up the exact same chart on Cryptopia, find the gaps, and you know now exactly where to work your bids on Trex because those gaps really do like to be filled in. And actually, it's kind of a fun hint. Right, you can. Uh, you're not going to see the liquidity. You're not going to see the amount of action on sites like Cryptopia. But if you go over there and check them out and find the gaps, find the massive tails and stuff, it, it just basically paints the levels. Uh, Kevin has been doing a lot of work on Cryptopia over the past year. What do you think, Kevin? Does that have you seen that sort of a line? Let's see if he's around. I don't know whether he's he's here or not. Kavarkinator, are you here? All right, uh, so Kavarkinator isn't here. Maybe we can get him to chime in on Cryptopia later. Oh, there he is. Uh, let's see. I guess I don't really cross-check them. Oh, okay. Well, to hell with you then. <laughs> uh, thank you. Anyway, uh, okay, Thomas has said that he's back. So, uh, Thomas, do you feel like um, 
Uh, most of the coins that are on Cryptopia that he's looking at aren't on Trex. Yeah, I suppose that's probably happened, eh? Maybe that's more of a commentary of like a year ago where you did have a lot of coins that were cross-listed. Uh, Trex has sort of become a bit snobby lately, eh? Which kind of sucks. Oh, well. All right, so disregard that thought. But I still think it's a good idea. And, Stephen, I like your idea of hunting those gaps on Cryptopia. They're very valuable, and especially the big tails. Uh, all right, Thomas, did you say you were back? Hey, I'm here. All right. Is there? Uh, do you want to post maybe a chart in the lounge or something that I'll just click on? Or do you want to, you know, we tried screen sharing before, but remember we lost the audio that time before. I don't want to take a chance of ruining this. For people. Yeah, let me grab two charts real quick, and I'll paste them in the lounge, and hopefully it'll illustrate what I saw last night, but the TV, the trading view feed, doesn't look like it's going to show it. But let me give you an hourly and a 15-minute. Did you notice that they, <laughs> they went and sort of uh, uh, um, changed <laughs> the trading view chart? doesn't have that gap on there anymore. Right. So this is something happened last night at about 11 o'clock Eastern, Eastern time where price was playing around with the, I believe it was the 13,100 level uh was that last night sorry not last night friday night here it is the gap's still there it looks like i don't know i'll just tell you guys what happened so friday night at around 11 o'clock eastern price was just kind of consolidating it had already moved up a couple hundred bucks from the lows that we were looking at around the daily brief time noon eastern time friday and by 11 o'clock eastern evening time on Friday, price was moving up and it kind of, it slowed down a little bit on the upside, but OK Exchange crashed. So for about 25 minutes. Uh, let's uh, let's it, maybe uh, quote crashed. <laughs> right. So I was in their Telegram group and asked them if their site was down and if they were aware of that. And they posted that they were aware and they were trying to get the site up as quickly as possible. And it almost seemed as if their Cloudflare had gone uh, offline from a DDoS attack. We'd seen that in the past where their site would go down and they were having trouble launching it. Is this the uh, they, chart you want us looking at right here? That's the hourly chart. So there's a 15 minute above it. If you can click that one. Um, it's, where did I put that? Starts with the number five, if you have that open or not. Doesn't look like you have it open, Brian. Uh, that one. There you go. Yeah, so let's go back. We're talking about like over here, right? So it's kind of tough to see over here. No, are we? So we're at what? Noon. So noon yesterday. Like the breakout, this whole event happened right here. Yeah. So is that? Can you dial down to a fifteen-minute chart and bring it up live on your screen? Maybe that'll be a little easier for everyone to see. Right here, and there was a huge hole in the there chart here. So if you move your cursor to that, those three candles, those three fifteen-minute candles that look like they haven't done anything. Boom, 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 boom. That's right around where the crash was. Yeah, and I, well, I remember. Yeah, I remember we were in the lounge, right? And we were watching this, and went vroom, right? And then all of a yeah. sudden, it just launched higher. So nobody had access to trading. I could not access the website. I couldn't access their their backend. The API was, as far as I could tell, offline. So no trades could be entered. But price went down almost two hundred fifty dollars into this crash. So what was the price there, Brian? It looks like it's twelve thousand three hundred. Right here, and then it we went got down it into 10, this 000. bar at uh, twelve thousand three hundred, and the low of this bar was twelve thousand forty. Uh, twelve thousand even. Twelve thousand and fifty-eight. Yeah. Beg your pardon. So I had a long working off that W breakout on the left here. Yeah. So I'm kind of freaking out because. I've got this position I'm sitting on. The whole site crashed, and this hasn't happened in six months to a year. And whenever that happens, it's always like guaranteed liquidation. They don't ignore, they don't pay any attention to your stops. I mean, you're screwed. So I was freaking out. I went in their telegram and like I said, they were they said they were working as quickly as they could to get it back up, but the price was going down. 
no trades could be executed. I've been trading here for three and a half years. I know how to get in on the back end and close out positions or open them up, and I could not do anything. I don't know what the hell happened here that night, but they restored um, preliminary API access in t right after that crash, and everybody started buying. Um, you either bought as soon as they launched it or you missed. It. I mean, look at those two 15 minute candles. The first green 15 minute candle, they launched the API again. And then the second one was when the website went live. They were able to relaunch the trading platform, but the actual data wasn't coming in and they weren't loading your positions. So for about 15 minutes, I thought that they lost my position and, all, and my coins for that matter. But luckily, Everything turned out to be okay. It was just a bunch of funny business, as Brian's put on the chart. And they launched the they launched the price higher, almost seven hundred bucks. And you know, I just got back from dinner with my wife, and I'm jumping up and down. I'm like, oh, I'm screwed. I just I can't believe they just did this. And then the thing comes back, and I was like, oh, I noticed this worked you out. noticed, and I think this is really interesting. So somebody obviously went short here. But notice how they just took the market conveniently right up to the level where that would fuck them over. Huh? Is that an accident? I don't think so. Is that a 20x liquidation level, Brian? 10. 10x. 20? 20 no, would be that can't. half of that. 10x would be 1,000. Right? 20 Did we go up 1,000 there? Yeah, uh, 20x would be right there. So right on the bang. Boom. <laughs> they knocked out the 20 Xers. And then I think they slowly worked the market up to knock out the 10 Xers. So I, there's something really, really suspicious about that. And the long and short of it here is none of us should be shocked that my hunch is this is basically where they need to take the market. You know, and what a coincidence there's the POC. Yeah. Right, yeah. so we launched higher after that and consolidated all day yesterday, and we yeah, put in okay, a real so set. I apologize for interrupting. Uh, do you want to be on the hourly chart to talk a little bit about what you see here? Yeah, let's go for that. Uh, last night or yesterday afternoon, there was a real nice M that came in. I'm sorry, my screenshot is so ugly there. That's up there. But uh, Brian's highlighting the M there. And when that came in, I posted in the lounge, hey, guys, it looks like we've got $1,000 on the downside to work with here, when that would coincide exactly with 38.2 and kind of the previous range where we took off after the, the crazy. You love hitting those, eh? A nice little fail up here right into 38.2. Do you like hitting those? Oh, yeah. I mean, anytime I've got 100% profit on a 10x leverage, I'm going to take that all day. Yeah. Nicely done. So that, that was a beautiful setup there. You had a little divergence. And, you know, it, it was just an exhausted move. It was some weekend screwery. And yeah. you just played on the downside. It was a slam dunk. Sweet. And we hit 38.2 on the downside. And we're kind of flopping around with a 50% level now. But mm -hmm. you can kind of tell we're building another bullish divergence, in, uh, potential bullish divergence here. Mm -hmm. So. We're, we're just playing. This is typical weekend trading. I think it's a little easier than some of the weekday trading because I can actually leave a position on for more than a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> the Chicago boys move fast, eh? <laughs> oh, it's insane. But this was nice. It was leisurely. I was able to fall asleep, didn't care, had my, set, had my level set and woke up and I was filled and out of the trade and I made my 95 for 96% it was on the trade and now I'm just chilling on Sunday not worrying about trading because I did well yesterday. Excellent. Good for you. For so, uh, yeah. So this is if anyone does want to look for a position, like I said, this bullish potential divergence is you got to watch for that to come in and we could have a nice quick wash trade back higher before they want to knock the, the uh shorts into place going into the beginning of the week. Yeah. But that's cheeky little yeah. gap. I see a cheeky little gap right there. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they take it back up into here. Yeah, so we're we're still waffling, you know. Make no mistake, again, this is weekend trading. Um, they could do any old damn thing they want, as Brian likes to say. 
Yeah, where's yeah. that? And honestly, my hunches is probably like uh, they're all they're gonna do is yeah. I mean, look at this. This is ridiculous. So you know, basically start a business. There's the New York close. Wow, what a shock! It's just basically, you know, what time is it? Uh, the Asians. It's uh, when they is it Monday morning? Wayne, you're in Asia right now, aren't you? Is it Monday I think morning it's there yet? Two in the morning. Uh, 4 a.m. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, oh, sorry. Um, I could very easily see that you know for this week's trade, they're gonna build uh, some sort of base in here to work back out. You know, but I don't know. You know, it's uh, I, I kind of think that this AB equals CD still has to play out. Only I don't think this is really the best trade location. It's kind of a choppy location, eh? Yeah, no, you're right. It is choppy, but if you can if you can find a, a nice M or a W, and you can make your two to one or whatever you're trading on for me, yeah. I mean, I'll take twenty percent here. And I this think that if we go long up to that twelve twelve uh, eight hundred level, that's got to yeah. be. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, for those people that are like, okay, what the heck is a setup look like? Right. I mean, we could argue that um, 38.2. I'm not the biggest fan of taking trades at 38.2, but as we sort of illustrated with Thomas, um, it's definitely doable if it's in your temperament. And we have higher highs. And we could even argue this is a double divergence. I get into trouble with all the ladies. Um, so we go boobity boo. Uh, paint that red and boobity boo. So nice double divergence. There's the M that Thomas talked about right there up, down, up, fail. And you know, if you can just, you know, especially you guys on YouTube, I said try and work into your trading. And we're just gonna we're not gonna be greedy. We're just gonna use a nice simple 50% rule as our target. Uh where is 50% rule? Well, there it is. So uh if we are going to take the M off of the double divergence, then we're going to sell on the M. We're gonna put our stop above the M, and we're gonna look to take profits at the 50% rule. And that produces a nice 2.3 risk reward trade. Isn't that cool? I'm serious, guys. Like, this is, you know, enough rhetoric, right? We want to actually transition from, I really like to learn this stuff, to, okay, I actually want to start learning how to trade to make money from trading. Um, this is it. In fact, we had one gentleman, Sebastian, uh, who's actually over at Top Step quite a bit now. And he he hunted these things religiously. Location, eh, 38.2. Eh, it's okay. Uh, I can live with that. Uh, maybe this was the end of an AB equals CD, something along those lines. Divergence. In this In, in this case, a double divergence. And a nice little M, so I got my three reasons to justify acting. I'm going to take the trade, the risk. Yeah, I'll just ride uh, Thomas's coattails if you want. But really, I would like for you to see why, how you can hunt this exact same trade setup that Thomas just talked about. So there's that M he's talking about. And, you know, when we go into the market and we actually take a risk, and then... Actually, you know, this is a really good commentary. Sorry, going off on a tangent here. I watched a really sad documentary on binary options yesterday. And I think on Friday's Daily Brief, didn't we go into explaining why we don't really like to consider binary options? The payout of being right is not enough to justify what I would consider the risk. And here's a great example that if we're going to take a risk in the marketplace, and we're right, we got to get paid. You got to make it worth your while to take that risk. And so this is an excellent illustration where if you just use something as simple as the 50% rule, that you want to make sure that at the bare minimum, this is, I mean, bare minimum, 
you know, the rule is you want to try and make sure that your average winner is bigger than your average loser. It's just the definition of how to be profitable. I actually don't think it's in your best interest to even consider setups trades where this number is less than two to one. And I know lots of traders, one gentleman in particular that I talk about all the time, um, Greg, he only considers trade setups that are like four to one, five to one risk reward so that when he's right, damn, he gets paid. So I think this is an excellent, very simple working model that everybody on YouTube, grab a screenshot of that and get in there and hunt these things. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, Sebastian, he did this. I worked with him. This is, this is the beauty of what I get to do as a trader is I get to watch you guys and I can see who's serious and who wants to really learn this shit and who's just sort of like, man, just fucking around. Um, and Sebastian put in the time and effort and worked his butt off. And he showed me 45 of these setups where about 75% worked. Uh, I'm the guy just, I wouldn't say that, Thomas. No, in fact, I remember specifically you and I had a conversation about a year or two ago where you said you had to sit down one day and really, you know, have a conversation with yourself. I remember that. So, no, actually, I disagree with you, Thomas. Uh, but I yeah, I know you have a sense of humor. You're just trying to lighten the air. Um, okay, so, you know, YouTubers, <laughs> We'll learn how to trade. There, there it is in glorious technicolor. It's just right there, right in front of your face. Right? Trading setups. If I may, this is level one stuff. So anyone on YouTube who wonders what we do behind the scenes, what the classes are about, this is classic level one stuff that you'll learn. Um, and frankly, I use this stuff more often than I can count. It's the fundamentals. It's the basics. It's how you start out your whole trading career, this is the backbone. And that trade that I did right there, you learn in the first couple months of the program. And I'm still you using it. The kick in the pants, Thomas. The kick in the pants is double tops, 50% level. I learned this shit 30 fucking years ago. Excuse my French. Everybody just went, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I learned this 30 years ago. If I had just and it's done this work. and nothing else, I'd be stinking rich now. Well, actually, I'm, I am, but if you took that's all the conversation, if the only thing you traded was what I just did here with these M's and the MACD divergence, and those are the only trades you took over the course of a month, you'd make more money than the guys that are day trading and waiting for these crazy setups that work, you know, hopefully more than 50% of the time. But these are great great setups and for and me it's so simple it's so and that that's the irony of it all is that because it is so simple people often overlook it and and discount it <laughs> it's, it's bread and butter. so yeah if you don't listen to brian listen to thomas this shit works you want to make money from trading just do it the key here is can you control yourself We've given you exactly what the criteria, look for this, look for this, look for this, then do that. Take profits at 50% rule, risk against M's and W's lows, right? That's basically what this trade is. It's the same thing. It's just this happens to be a head and shoulders versus a W, but hopefully if we zoom in, you can see the W down, up, down, breakout. This trade is still working, right? So, you know, the point of the matter here is, um, all you got to do is just define what your reasons are. Make sure you take appropriate risk. And actually, I saw Shane, uh, excellent post in the YouTube page. He says, um, margin traders, I uh, would put, whoops, uh, don't post more, Shane. Then it scrolls away your message. <laughs> uh, I like this. I would put less than uh, risk up 2.5% or 1% of my portfolio. If you're margin leverage trading, I like those kind of numbers, right? Don't really break two, two and a half percent on any kind of risk per setup. Um, obviously, little old ladies, because we don't have to really worry too much about getting stopped out. We can bump up against those higher risk levels. But even little old ladies, I mean, they risk two percent on a position perfectly fine. Um, they just get to hold and just ride it out. Margin traders don't have that luxury. So. 
Okay, one of these days I'll actually get back to uh, wait. Columbus, what do you think? Uh, did you are you finished? Uh, is there anything else you'd like to uh, show us here today? Well, we got you. Um, I would like to say that if you know what M's or NW's are in the market, and you think you're experienced at looking and finding them, that if you're not looking at line charts that are, you know, in your everyday life, when you're walking around and you see line charts, and you don't stare at it and you go, that looks like an M, or that looks like a W, it's going to go <laughs> down, it's going to go up. I mean, this stuff just starts jumping out at you when you're just walking down the street. It's scary, so, eh? <laughs> You have got a great grasp of this stuff. I mean, it's just, it's really frightening. You could just look at the side of a building and see a crack on it. You're like, oh, that thing made a W and it actually keeps going higher. It's, it's <laughs> really weird. And that's when you know you've spent way too much time with Brian. In a good way, of course. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the whole matrix, eh? I'm trying to figure this damn wow. thing out one of these days. So with but that at the same time, too... This is really, really, and obviously, you know, people journals. What we saw happen on Friday was definitely one of those. Uh, did I see something happen in the market today that seemed a bit out of the ordinary? And this screamed funny business to me. Um, uh, and the way that TradingView's data feed cut out, and there was there are big holes on the charts, and now mysteriously we see, oh, the holes have disappeared. Hmm. This is the kind of stuff that you need to make reference to now because six months from now, you're not going to remember this shit, all right? So not only, you know, trade setups, uh, divergences, trade location, talk about margin runs, blah, 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 blah. I think also today in our conversation, we had a really interesting education in, you know, what does funny business on OKCoin really look like? And I still don't even think we know ex actually what happened there. Something happened. What I want. Insiders got rich. That's what happened. Yeah, uh, seem it seemed a bit fishy, didn't it? Okay, uh, let's head on over and take a look at some of your ideas. That was uh, supposed to be what I was supposed to do here. So thank you so much, Thomas. Uh, we uh, maybe everybody come off your um, uh, take your uh, uh, self off a of mute in the lounge and uh, clap your hands for Thomas. Thank you, sir. You know you know. You. Hey, there we got a kitty clap. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and Axel just types clap. <laughs> Thank you, Axel. Okay, uh, let's see. So actually, we talked a little bit about Stephen's uh, thoughts on on uh, Cryptopia gaps. I think that's definitely uh, something to look at. Uh, XBC, uh, BTC, I don't know where you're trading, so let's go see. XBC, is that what it was? Bitcoin Plus on Polo. Hmm. XBC, BTC. Well, what are you showing me here, Stephen? Uh, on Cryptopia, okay. Well, it looks like, uh, well, it looks like you're uh, drinking from the punch bowl. That's good to see. Uh, and actually, I think uh, Stephen's actually referred a few people to us, so I think he's seeing some value in this. I'm not quite sure what it is you'd like me to report on here, though, or comment on. Um, you know. Nice test of the lows. Beautiful W following that test. This is like textbook. Nice trade, Stephen. I mean, what can I say? Good trading. Um, probably also a good example of ranging market thesis. So uh, I wouldn't even be surprised if this is a lepra kavark, but uh, 88.6 is probably off of these levels. Might even be some gaps down in there that needed filling. Nice double bottom. We talk about it recapturing 78.6, line in the sand. And now you can probably go the other direction. So uh, 61.8, Mountain Man's going to be a test off of that Wix high right there. And you can also see it's the top of value. And you can see there's 200 period moving average. So eh, my hunch is probably going to work its way up into this level here. Obviously, we can't be buyers up here. You know, you could maybe even do a reload zone within a reload zone if you wanted to try and rebuy this. Oh, you can see you got the big reload zone right here. And a little mini reload zone down here. 
And of course, there's the bottom of value. So Hogue, he would love down bids down in this area here. And you might get a nice A, B, C, D, probe us down into this level. So uh, if you're interested, 0 0.0059, yeah, let's call it 0 0.006, somewhere in that area, it's not bad. So some levels to consider. <laughs> Throw that in the launch. Thank you, Stephen. Mm. All right, who's next? Ah, we gave you one, Stephen. We'll give you a VUC another day. DNT, let's see what we got there. Uh, DNT, DNT. I'll go over here, I guess. Well, you can probably see where Brian would be interested. Beautiful double bottom there. Not even that bad idea to go and be nibbling away down in here. If anything, this is probably a good example where, you know, and if I look at the book, I probably did. You know, maybe start your nibble strategy on a test of this low. Wait for the next double bottom to come in. All right, there's your double bottom that comes in. Moving average crosses, all that kind of stuff. So probably, you know, if you did actually step up and add to the position, it gives you a nice sort of average cost right off of the pock. What a surprise. Market works its way up. Hopefully you're selling halves on doubles, taking profits. What do you think the odds are that uh, this low, this low, this low, the original sort of average cost level, these are all going to be like reload zone areas. You know it's coming. All right, so 78.6. Probably this is a really good example of our le uh, Lepra Kavark. Uh, where's 88.6? There's good old Ian. So, oh, interesting. So Ian is basically sitting right at the original average cost level, I would figure. And isn't that interesting how that's the POC as well? So, uh, you know, as our sort of rule is, can't even really even think about buying up here. You just can't, sorry. Uh, you could even argue technically that, uh, you know, these weird, these initial candles are often really odd, but nonetheless... It's interesting to see how the market basically stalled as we got up into these levels up here. Um, you know, there's a good example of the blind mountain man tag trade. Some people like to trade like mountain man and just hit that level. And seeing the bounce off of this level shouldn't really shock anybody. Um, so, you know, we're starting to get into trade location down here. And then seeing the size of this tail, definitely think that needs to be eaten. Seeing these tails and then this tail, you know, this is where Joshua, if you go and grab the lower time frame charts, let's go gap hunting all through this. Uh, my hunch is, you know, there's the top of value alone, you know, and maybe we're going to be A, B, C, Ding our way down into here. So, you know, if you're a buyer, maybe start your buying strategy at about, uh, looks like about, what does that say? 530 or so all the way down to like three, 400 area. That's probably, you know, sprinkle your bids in now. Then when we start to see things like divergences develop down in here and W's like Thomas was saying earlier, very much like this W, yeah, then we can start really getting serious about this. For the time being, there's just nothing going on here. All right. And, and you know, I do see this. This is one reason why I haven't been talking a lot about altcoins lately is that this is actually, you guys remember a couple months ago, I remember this. Do you guys, somebody attest to me. I sat here day after day after day and went, you could literally just buy any coin. And I said, pick a list of 20 of them and any of them down in here. And within six months, you're going to be making money, right? Does anybody remember that? Anyone? Thank you, Paul. Somebody's good. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Casey. I remember it was as plain as day. You don't remember, you're just being a pain in the ass, Shane. I know you are. <laughs> so, you know, that trade's over. Now, what we have to do is we got to let this develop again. And this might take some time, guys. You know, I've told everybody, and I honestly believe this, our next sort of big altcoin event window is, in my opinion, uh, right here. So do you see how, and actually this is kind of cool. We could do like a market symmetry here. 
You hear? Saying that work? Oh, there it is. All right, and then we go here to here. So in essence, this thing is, you know, if we just do the same market symmetry pattern, um, it's saying that this, and actually it's interesting, right? Because we got this dump, which sort of corresponds with maybe that dump. I don't know. It's a tough one. Is this counter trend rally corresponding with that? I don't know. Um, and actually maybe if we even stretch this out a bit, it might work better. If we go, I don't know, just eyeballing this, having some fun, something like that. I like the idea of the market bottoming in here. And then, of course, this is 420, and all the altcoiners love this. I've seen year after year after year. We sort of, you know, we go through our washout. We've talked lots in videos about Kevin and I sitting in the lounge hunting charts in the middle of February. Uh, we get a little bit of a perk up, and then all of a sudden, 420 comes along, and everybody falls in love with the pot coins. So uh, that's sort of what I'm thinking is the next sort of month or two for us here in old coin land. So I'm not really in a huge hurry. I'm not going to push a chain. Don't force anything. There's no hurry here. You know, Brian, I'll start getting my bids to start, you know, like Joshua's gap, um, you know, spreadsheets and stuff. Love is Joshua. Oh, just sex delicious. Um, and... Um, you know, when price comes back down into our levels, we'll start going shopping again. Uh, okay, let's keep moving this bus forward. You, uh, Steven, Jesus, you're just pushing out all the charts. Only one uh, per show. So y'all going to have to wait till the next one. There's another one from Steven. <laughs> uh, TNB, BTC on Binance. Let's see what I got there. So many symbols. TNB. <laughs> Excuse me. T N B uh, Binance. There we go. That one. Yeah. yeah, same old, same old. At least the good part about this is you're not walking into a trap. There's an old uh, saying: eighty percent rule, Hogue's eighty percent rule. If we enter into value and accept into value, sure looks like we have. Then 80% of the time we should come down and test value low. So that's basically back down into these. Probably, uh, you know, we do Kavarkinators and all that kind of fun stuff. I wouldn't have a problem starting to get, yeah, interesting. Look how we came down, tag 78.6, total Kavark there, right? And boing. Um, that's a 682. So look at that, motherfuckers, I gave him a double too. You see that? That Kavark trade. You got a double there. Wow. Incredible. So uh, Kvarkinator's already on a free position. Um, eh, I'm thinking probably, you know, same sort of thing we talked about in that last chart. You know, it's probably going to do something like this over the next while. So no real hurry. Just let the Ws come in. You don't need to push a chain here. It's going to be a while. Uh, doo, doo, doo. LTC, oh, we haven't looked at Litecoin in a bit. I had on a uh, bot long, but I really didn't like what I was seeing, so I got the hell out of there. I think I just did scratch. Um, so many different places to look at this thing. Do we want to look at it US dollars or in Bitcoin? <laughs> Uh, what did the person ask? The person asked to look at it in U.S. dollars on Phoenix. Oh, I apologize. Let's try that again. On Phoenix. There it is. Boom. Yeah, yeah remember we were kind of hunting longs, I think, up in here. can't remember. I might do it versus Bitcoin, so it looked a little different. You know, it's never a good sign, guys. It's never, ever a good sign when you hear, you know, a primary director guy say, I'm selling everything. It'd be interesting to see what level uh, Charlie Lee did dump everything, but that should have been a major, major warning sign to everybody. Does that make sense? Should. All right. If you don't know this, especially you YouTubers, hey, Ian. Mr. Lepra Kavark, especially you YouTubers, um, that's a great journal entry shit, right? 
if I ever hear that a principal operator of a coin says either I'm selling everything or the price of my coin is too high and I'd like to see the price come down, those are generally not bullish things. <laughs> hint, hint, hint. <laughs> uh, all right, so, you know. I suppose, hey, you know, in, on a story, looking at a story like this, we have to start asking ourselves, where's, quote, unquote, the bottom? I think uh, we can definitely start off by saying, where did the big boy stop the bear before? And we definitely have a, a bottoming sort of price action down in here. That's a long way down there. <clears throat> we also have another one here. Remember our look left conversations. Uh, down in here. All right, so you can see uh, the floor is down in this area. You could also argue like Wyckoff, um, higher highs and higher lows defines a bull market. All right, so now we're getting some, uh, some um, institutional fingerprints, previous structural market structure breakout levels. Sure looks to me like this is a really important level right there. And gee whiz, we look at this profile. Have we ever seen this before? I've sh I show this to the level twoers all the time. And what's interesting is if you look at a Bitcoin chart from like back in 2013, exactly the same thing. And literally what has to happen is <clears throat> um, we probably have to come all the way right back down to value. Really not a big surprise. And the interesting thing is, is if we did a fib off of this range, do you see this funny little notch right there? What do you think the odds are that that notch is a 38.2? I bet you're pretty good. If you go off of that low, well, let's go. Oops. There we go. 38.2 doink so and actually this is a good exercise for you guys to try and say okay what did price action do okay that kind of makes sense ray brichette 38.2 okay and we got a notch there so clearly this was a level so do you see how i could have taken my fib off of here and gone okay well i could take my fib off of you know any of these lows i gotta take my fib off of well darn Try and keep the high. Take my fib off of this low. Okay. I do like the idea of you just sort of listening to the market. I got a funny feeling. Actually, you know, that's not a bad level there. But I oh, like let's work off of this low, sort of this previous structural breakout, and let's see if we can work these levels. Now, this is interesting. Mountain Man, we talk about Mountain Man tag and then violent shift back up. So, and interesting too, look how 200 period moving average is going to come up with this structural level, and that will be Mr. Kavarkinator. All right, 78.6 off of previous structural breakout. Uh, so, I mean, can you buy Litecoin here? No. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Uh, could we have an AB equals CD working? Kind of looks like it. AB. C, D. Oh, now we're starting to get some levels. Okay, so we've got the old structural level. We've got a harmonic objective. We've got previous uh, institutional fingerprints. I can maybe put a one on there too. I think we're starting to get some levels. Right? So let's wait for price to come back into these levels. And then at this point, Right, we're come down into trade location. So then, at this point, our our momentum indicators uh, starting to register divergences, right? Something like that. And then, if this divergence is confirmed, can we start seeing Ws to come in to frame our trade? Does that make sense, everybody? Anybody? How about you, YouTubers? Do you think you could do that? YouTube, I'm talking to you.
Man, that delay is slow. How long is that? Uh, is there anybody even over there? Hey, there we go. Josh Kelly just said yes. All right, Josh Kelly. So there you go. Uh, can I buy uh, Litecoin right here? No. Um, is this trade something I'd be interested in? Sure. Just, you know, what are the three words in real estate? All right, considering Flebas, what are the three words in real estate? So you weren't listening earlier. Let's see if you're listening now. Okay, uh, it's 20 to the top of the hour. How long have we been going here? Does anybody know? I see that uh, the, the messages are starting to pile up here, so I guess I better get off my ass and get going here. Looking for some good entries on gold for a hedge. Well, um, I think I've told you recently, Wayne, um, I uh, initiated a gold buying program here recently. So uh, I've got, uh, I got filled on three of my orders. I got one more order working. Looks like there's a big old gap there. You could work a bid. As it stands right now, I've just been sort of mentally thinking about a stab test of this 78.6 to get my... <clears throat> Last order filled. <laughs> well, that's kind of what I would be suggesting here, too. Nothing really out of the ordinary. Reload zones within reload zones. Love them. I do have a bid working here, but uh, definitely um, could go and alter that bid. I could bump it up, but I'll just let this work, see how we do. So hopefully that helps you, uh, Wayne. Uh, you can see this huge gap here. So I don't think it's a good idea to chase this up here. There's a 50% level. There's 61.8. There's 78.6. There's Brian's stinky gap uh, or stinky bid. Um, and even off of this railroad tracks low there, right, that's probably the floor. So if I'm really lucky, get a nice little fuck you stab into these lows. Give me my final fill. But, you know, these guys on vault, man, they don't, they don't like giving you good fills. You got to be really, really patient. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah, there's a little gap right there. There you go, dude. So uh, you, you, whoops. So you're not really asking. You're just like, okay, Brian, these are my levels. Let's see if you can find my levels, right? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> All right, good. Well, at least we're sort of on the same page. I'll hunt against these lows. <laughs> Um, and of course, you know, no guarantees in the management, Wayne. There's it doesn't have to trade down there. Oh, you're one sat above mine, eh? Are you bastard? <laughs> Front running me, are you? All right. Uh, all right, moving right along. XRP. Oh boy, this should be interesting. XRP. Uh, I've got it on Trek, so we might as well look over there. Let's see what we got. Uh, do we want to do this versus dollars or Bitcoin? There is the dollar one. Where is the Bitcoin one? Bitrix, ETH. Hmm. I must be blind. Oh, there we are. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, this looks exactly like Litecoin. The worst part about this is, oh, these sons of bitches. Notice this, zing, zing, and then uh, puke. <laughs> Do you see potentially history repeating itself here, guys? Man, that football player dude who fucking told people to buy up here. Oh, God, what a headache. That poor guy, man. And I swear, the good part about it is I'm getting my passport now. So I'm going to go buy tickets to the Seattle Seahawks games. And you know for damn sure I am going to remind him every single time I see him. <laughs> oh, he's never going to hear the end of it. <laughs> totally. That would be so funny, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna remind that guy. Oh, so my hunch is I hate to say it, guys, but my hunch is this is what they've got planned. That it's gonna come down just like this, right? And it's gonna go back and forth. And guys who bought here are gonna be like, well, it's not so bad, it's not so bad, no, it's not so bad, it's not so bad, not so bad. And then they're gonna puke out and this will be their death. Um, so if we sort of do the same analogy, you know, you have the 
it's not so bad. It's not so bad. It's not so bad. And then I would look for uh, right back down into value, right? You can see Hogue would not even be interested in this thing until we get at least back to here. And there, of course, there's the 200 period moving average. Wicks and tails like to be eaten. So you can see that big old tail right there. Uh, I, and this is where Josh would totally shine. Because my hunch is if you pulled this chart apart right through here, there's probably some really juicy gaps on the lower time frame. Um, and then finally, you know, if we do good old, uh, you know, Kvarkinator, Lepra Kvark. The problem with Kvarkinators uh, and stuff is I really want to have some half-decent structure to, uh, to frame the trade. And what I'm really worried about here, just like this, is this is a V-bottom which means that this isn't really solid. It's just straight down, straight back up, classic sign of a manipulated asset. So there is no uptrend here. And anybody who's convinced themselves that there is an uptrend here, they're kind of lying to themselves. And it kind of sucks. And this is why, you know, for a guy like me, it's super, super, super important to listen to the market. Don't put your ego in there and say, yeah, this is a bottom. I mean, listen to the market. And the bottom line here is this is not a W. I'm sorry. I know you want it to be a W, but it isn't. So uh, be damn careful here. And for God's sakes, don't listen to professional football players uh, giving you trading advice. That's just asking for trouble. So... Um, you can see um, interesting. Actually, we're starting to get some really interesting, um, you know, um, confluence here. We've got uh, there's. Uh, I don't like this structure. Ugly, ugly. So we're not going to call this a kavark. I don't think Kevin would call this a kavark. But uh, there is seventy eight point six. There is two hundred period moving average. There's a big juicy tail. There's the top of value. So at the very minimum where I would start to think about shopping is around this uh, 6,000 level. Um, for now, it's just in drift mode. If anything, what you saw here, perfect example again of Mountain Man and, uh, and, and Sherm. Seriously, man, watch this fucking video, man. Learn this stuff, right? Um, it shouldn't surprise us that we got the dead cat bounce right off of that level. Shouldn't surprise us at all. But is this a trending market? We're trending higher. No way. Okay. Um, I do have to get ready for Liam. Does anybody remember when we started this thing? I think we've been going for like an hour or two here, haven't we? Huh. Shall we call it a day? Um, we got through quite a bit of the list. Not bad. <laughs> we'll just keep banging away tomorrow. I feel talked out. So one and a half hours. Yeah, okay. So you, hey, you YouTubers, man, you got a fucking treat here today. So, okay, I think we'll leave it at that. Uh, two hours, it says. Hey, the number's going up uh, as we talk. All right, so, all right, why don't we leave it at that? You guys have yourselves a great day. All you YouTubers, this is what we do Monday to Friday, chart and charts, trade and trades, just having fun. Um, we are making the transition to the new website. My level oneers, of course, we've got school tomorrow, so get ready. Uh, I've already given you some special assignments, so you guys better be paying attention. And I want to be having a conversation with about Mr. Uh, Hoagland with you tomorrow. Um, so uh, let's all, uh, you know, play from a position of strength. PMA for the win. All you veterans, of course, it's great to watch you guys out in the market having a blast. Um, and uh, let's just keep on keeping on. All right, have yourselves a great day, everybody. All the best, and bye for now.